The Philly fighter could knock you out in the minute. My record was 40 wins, 7 losses, and uh, 1 draw. People don't do things the way that we do things. The majority of boxers you meet are very uh, humble and, and, and nice and will do anything for you. We are the best. Bully the Worm Monroe, Tyrone Everett. Everybody here volunteers this service. Nobody gets paid. It's a unique gym. Petey Pop built the building for me. Everything you say in there, everything's perfect here. Joe always wanted to give something back to the community because he made his money with boxing. The greatest Philadelphia fighter, smoking Joe Frazier right here, fighting Ali. Timmy was a two-time heavyweight champion. We got his nephew. Uh, trained in here, Chaz with a spoon, also a heavyweight. This is my gym that I attend. It's called Johan's Gym. We, we have the nicest gym in the city, and I would say the, the state of Pennsylvania. He's like the pride of my gym. I made the Olympic team in a year and 10 months into my boxing career, so everything happened relatively overnight for me. Chaz is a smart guy. Being from Philly and having the last name with a spoon, you know, there's a lot of expectations that are put on me, you know, because Tim was a two-time heavyweight champ of the world back in the 80s. He will be a contender. Coming from Philly, whenever you go anywhere, people automatically assume that you're a tough brawler. They expect uh, a certain fight uh, and a tough fight out of you, you know, so you can't come and be somebody who's weak or somebody who runs and somebody who's not willing to sit there and trade with you. You don't get many Philly fighters that are dancers and hit and run. That doesn't happen. And you probably couldn't get training for that fighter in Philadelphia. Philly has a rich tradition of uh, tough, rugged champions. You have to carry that torch, so to speak. I'll introduce you to Lawan Sign. He was getting ready for a title shot. Broke his jaw in the second round, finished the fight and won it. It's the only other guy that ever did that was Muhammad Ali. My name is Lawan Simon from Philadelphia, PA. I've been boxing for seven or eight years. 15-0 with two draws, nine knockouts. On my way to becoming a world champion, hopefully, I get the right opportunity. Uh, I was love boxing. I seen a, a Marvin Hagler fight when I was younger, and ever since then, I always wanted to fight. I guess be a professional and try to go for a world belt. I was a fighter, but I don't fight no more. Philadelphia boxers tend to stay involved. I'm a trainer now. I fought Leo Lewis Martin, Floyd Patterson, sparred with George Foreman. I fought George Foreman at the Spectrum in 1971. I had a good record at when I first started out as a light heavy. And then they tried to move me into heavyweights. And that's where I started to go down. He was only 175 pounds. When you put a fighter up against the guy, you can just look at his style and you think, my guy could take him. And that's the kind of fight you put him in. But as a lightweight, I was 17 and one. This is what can happen in boxing. Today, if he was my fighter, the way we care about our fighters, we would have made no money, but would have kept him light heavyweight. We have two fighters now. We already turned down three or four fights because they weren't the right guys that they wanted to match us with. And this is one uh, up and coming amateur here. He's going to be fighting in the uh, Mid-Atlantic tournament. Also, the Golden Glove. Best trainers you can get. I feel like a father figure for those that wasn't raised with one. Um, you can come to them about anything. If you mess up, they make sure you do it right. They never give up on you. They never give up on you. That's one thing you never got to worry about. Whatever it takes, you know what I mean, to get you where you need to be, to get you on the right track. And I love them without a doubt. They make me feel complete. You know what I mean? And here I know I got a family. Here I know I definitely got a family at Joe Hands. Yeah, he's probably our top amateur right now. He's progressing really well. He uh, has a lot of natural abilities, and he's also the first cousin of Chaz Witherspoon. Some of that could come from the uh, bloodline, and he's going to advance quickly through the amateur ranks. You go to Cincinnati. Maybe they had one champion or something, and that guy goes to the gym. They might open 10 gyms. But these kids never see a world champion. My name is Bobby Boogaloo Watts, former top middleweight in the world. One of my biggest wins was Marvin is Marvin Hagler. January 13, 1976. I'm training, training kids, fighters, whoever wants to be one. And you know, that's what I'm here for. He helps our kids here. It seems like the better these Philadelphia fighters were in the ring, 
the more of a gentleman they were. When we see a kid come to the gym and he has his gym bag in one hand and his school bag in the other hand, we know that we're doing a job. The thing that Joe and his family are most proud of is there's a computer lab in here for children because the kids that don't have computers, everyone's welcome to use them. No one pays. I can't tell you how many kids we helped, but I know along the way it had to be quite a few of them, kids that might have went the other way. If you save one or two, you know, it's still something. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's just having that team and seeing these children develop. Philadelphia boxers stay involved in boxing. Joey Giardella, his whole family comes to the gym. He doesn't leave the community, he stays involved, and he wants to stay involved. Joey Giardella here. And in here you have Joey Giardella's grandson and great-grandson right there. It's his grandson and great-grandson. That's amazing. What, 1948 to 1967. I love banging. It's, it's part of me. Been in the family for many years. Just started uh, training. Years ago I was in the gym just for working out. Kind of getting in here now, just kind of having fun with it. It's really, it's all non-profit. It's, it's really out of love. And I mean, I got my guy, my trainer Tommy here, for instance. He comes here every day of the week, strictly out of love. And I mean, that's what really shows through here. It's like my cheers in Philly, you know what I mean? It's just a place where everybody can go and it's kind of like family. You come in here every day, whether you're happy, sad, no matter what, everybody accepts you, takes you for what it is. My son is my uh, pride and joy, Joey Giardello's great-grandson, Shawn Michaels. He's working so far with a few of the guys in here and everything like that, and it looks like maybe after the first of the year, he's gonna be uh, possibly stepping in the ring. They're not in here like to let the kids get beat down. They're here to work with them and, and build the kids into better people. And you can see that just by looking at a few of the younger kids here. You can really see how they've just transformed in the months that I've been. You can see it. They really do. They take little kids and make them into men. Yeah, I can't wait till I'm 13. I'll finally be a teenager. That'll be fun. This is my baby fighter right here, Sean. So, you know, I'm trying to develop and bring him along just as well as other guys. I'm bringing them along. This place, I, I like it here. It's nice. Um, it's got a lot of space. The trainers, they're good. Um, a lot of nice people here. It's really fun. It's a lot of good experience. And I just love doing boxing. I just love doing it. Uh, I take my grandfather's place, Joey Giardello. Today we work on a lot of um, skills and stuff, bobbing and weaving and combinations. There's a unique way that we train sparring sessions they're like wars and the great thing about doing this for me as i said i'm 70 years old i planned my life to be a certain way and that's how it is